Hey all you wonderful people. Today we're gonna to be talking about representing proportional relationships in tables, graphs, and equations. Some of these you've kind of seen before because we've definitely seen ratio tables. But let's talk about whether or not again to identify if they are proportional or not. So if we look at, and if you're paying really good attention, you might notice that these are the same problems, or at least some of the same problems, from your activity today. So you're welcome for solving them for you. All right, so remember, when identifying a proportional relationship, there's multiple strategies. We can convert to decimals. We can find a common multiplier. We can cross simplify or use that butterfly effect. And we can use those double number lines. When it comes to a, a, a table, I find it to be easiest to either find the common multiplier or convert to de decimals. So let's look at common multipliers, right? To go from one to three, I'm multiplying by three. To go from two to six, I multiply by three. To go from three to nine, I multiply by three. And to go from four to 12, I multiply by three. Because each column kind of has the same multiplier, that common multiplier, then this would be considered proportional, right? That would be a ratio table. It is representing proportional relationships. So that one we would drag to proportional. Well, let's look at this one. To go from one to two, I multiply by two. To go from two to four, I multiply by two. To go from three to eight, well, I definitely don't multiply by two because three times two is six. So because each column is not multiplied by the same number, this is not proportional. And you would take that chart into the non-proportional column, right? So remember, use those strategies and you have to check each row or column to make sure you're really seeing if all of them are the same. Well, let's look at, and let me bring this big all foil. Let's look at proportions in a graph. Either you're looking for two things, two things. Oh, my font is huge. All right, number one, you have to go through the origin. So in order to be a proportional relationship, you have to start at zero, zero. Remember that origin, that dot right there. Well, both of those start at zero, zero. So number one, checked off. And number two, you have to be a straight line. In order to be proportional, you have to increase at the same rate. So this little squiggly over here, Nope, not proportional. It went through the origin, but it's not a straight line. The proportional one is this one over here. It went through the origin and is a straight line. So those are the two things you're looking for in a graph. Does it go through the origin and is it a straight line? Pretty easy, right? And the last one let's look at is when we're looking at proportions in an equation. So the formula for a proportion or proportional relationship is y equals mx. M is what we call the rate of change. It's also known as slope, but more to come on that next week when we actually graph some relationships. So y equals mx, right? So if I look at these two equations, only one of them follows that formula. This says y equals 4x, right? So it's kind of like the common multiplier is 4. But if I look at this one over here, y equals 3x plus 8. If I have that plus 8, I'm not going through the origin if I were to graph this. So that is not a proportional relationship. So you're looking for like y equals 4x, y equals 1 half x, y equals 3x, y equals 12x, right? Anytime you have a y equals 2x minus 4 or a plus 8 or a plus 2, and that is not a proportional relationship. So in order to be a proportion, you have to start at zero, zero, and then increase at the same rate. So those are the ones that you're looking for when looking at an equation. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Love you. Bye.